Right, good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for attending this first of our devolution consultation stroke engagement events. Um, devolution, as people will be aware, is a rapidly moving feast. It's not something where we can present option one, option two, because we don't know what they are. It's still evolving. Um, but it is something that's a massive decision for us as a city, a massive opportunity. Um, and so we're very determined to really get out to people and say what we potentially could do, some of the choices that might be on offer. So I'm Chris Stewart. I'm leader of the City of York Council. On my right is Steve Stewart, who is our interim chief executive. On my left is Anne Reid. Deputy Leader of the Liberal Democrats, and on the extreme left is Phil Witchley, who is going to be doing the majority of the presentation, one of our economic policy officers. So, I think the, Phil, do you want to say about the format or, and launch straight into your bit? Um, the format really is where I'm going to give a presentation outlining the facts around devolution and, and some of the issues, um, and then we're going to open up the questions to the panel. So, I'll kick off, Phil. Thank you. Yep. So in terms of what we're doing today, so I'm going to give a background to devolution, as I just said. Um, I'm going to talk about the process of devolution and the arrangements of other places that we've had in the past, um, and, then as well, and talk a bit about the possible powers and responsibilities. As Chris alluded to earlier, a lot of this is still up for grabs, and we don't know what the powers and possibilities might, the powers and responsibilities might be, but we'll outline some of the potential ones. So what is devolution? Um, I think I'm talking to people at a relatively informed audience from people I know here, but um, obviously people at home on the webcast, it, you, you'll have seen through recent announcements that the government is, is, is saying a lot about devolution at the moment. It's offering places in England the chance to have a greater responsibility and control over decisions and spending in their region. The process of transferring powers and decisions which would usually be taken by central government to a more local regional level, and that's what they, they're calling devolution. How do things currently work? Well, at the moment, most decisions, um, most public sector spending decisions affecting York and most local areas across the country are made by central governments in Whitehall. Um, many of the tax raised within York and other local areas flow back to central government. Income tax, corporation tax, even council tax flows back to central government before being redistributed to um, local government through a funding formula. A recent report by the Centre for Cities um, looking at tax and making some assumptions um, calculated that around £1.5 billion is raised across all taxes in York, but only £150 million is available to the council to spend on local services, which shows you know, the scale of, of taxes raised here that goes to central government. In other countries, more decisions are made at a local or regional level. Um, the situation in the UK is already moving and could change quite radically in the coming years. For example, the proposed arrangements for Scotland could offer one of the most significant de devolved powers anywhere in the world. So why would we want, why would, why would places want to have more powers or responsibilities from government? Places might wish to focus their spending on their local priorities and potentially have, a, have more of a say over local taxation. Places might want to work together more across services and use local knowledge to get better value for money for residents. They might want to be more self-sufficient and have more responsibility for the future of their local areas. And there's an account potential accountability issue here um, that decision making moves from a decision maker in Whitehall to a decision maker more locally, allowing more accountability for local politicians who understand local issues better and can be held to account more easily. So the process of devolution. Why is this important now? Um, the government said in its recent budget, um, and talking about the devolution with Greater Manchester, the devolution we have agreed with Greater Manchester in return for a directly, direct, directly elected mayor is available to all other cities who want to go down a similar path. We are working towards deals with the Sheffield and Liverpool city regions and Leeds, West Yorkshire and partner authorities on far-reaching devolution of power in return for the creation of directly elected mayors. It's interesting there that the sentence around the city regions included a, a phrase that says Leeds, West Yorkshire and partner authorities, which reflects, um, which York is obviously included as one of the partner authorities in terms of that, but that's something we need to, we need to discuss and consider. On the 21st of July, the government said that city regions want, that want, to, want to agree a devolution deal in return for a mayor by the spending re review will need to submit a formal fiscally neutral proposal and an agreed geography to the Treasury by the 4th of September 2015. So the timing is quite tight, and, and, and note that, that that message came on the 21st of July, hence a consultation in August. Um, 
we're at the point in this process of looking at options for York, so we want to use this, this process to give you the opportunity to help shape the decisions and, and say what you're interested in in terms of devolution. So how can we get these powers and responsibilities that, are, that, that the government are looking to devolve? Um, well, the government have been clear so far that individual councils can't get these extra powers and resources on their own. The government has been clear that, that to have most powers and responsibilities devolved places must be part of a joint body with other places where decisions about these things would be taken, and technically that's called a combined authority. Um, the government's been pretty clear um, that, that, that any, any devolution has to come with a regionally elected mayor who has the overall responsibility for over powers and resources gained for any deal. And this would be a bit like the Mayor of London currently has and would work in a similar way. Any agreement would have to be, and any arrangement would have to be agreed by all of the places involved, included by central government. Um, so, York already works with other areas and there's elements of this which, which is new and there are elements of this which, which isn't new. Um, we, we've already got a track record of working with other areas on things related to businesses, jobs and transport, as well as things that happen over a larger area than just a single council. For example, someone commuting to work or a business working with suppliers outside of the city. Specifically, York, because it looks in different ways in terms of its economic geography, is part of two local enterprise partnerships, which are business-led partnerships of local businesses, local authorities and other partners that promote economic growth across the functional economic geography. Um, so LEPs can bid for funding f from, from, the, from that economic geography through growth deals. So we've been part of working arrangements with a joint body with, uh, through the Leeds City region and authorities in West Yorkshire as well as some North Yorkshire boroughs, Leeds, Bradford, Wakefield, Kirklees, Calderdale, Harrogate, Selby and Craven for around a decade. And we've also been part of the North Yorkshire East Riding in York LEP for the past four years. Um, and through these joint arrangements, we have got, we've received some funding for things like university research centres, support for small businesses, skills and apprenticeship provision, business grants, and developing major sites like York Central. Examples of specific projects York's received funding for include 1.6 million towards York Central flood risk work and 2.6 million towards developing a centre of excellence at Ascombe Bryan College. There's also earmarked funding currently from the West Yorkshire Transport Fund for work to improve York's northern outer ring road and to enable access to the York Central site. Um, just looking at how the LEPs compare in terms of the growth, for its growth deal with government, the York, North Yorkshire and East Riding growth deal has gained around £107 per person for 20, 2015 to 2021 in growth deal so far. And through the growth deal, lead, to compare for the growth deal, these city regions gained around £228 per person, so, so higher but reflecting the city's agenda that the central government has. Um, European funding is also allocated and administered through these regional bodies. Um, the, the European funding for the Leeds city region totals £338 million and £92 million for York, North Yorkshire and East Yorkshire. And those, and those monies will be spent on the area and available for York organisations to bid for. Um, the next slide looks at um, powers and responsibilities. That the sort of things we could we could be we could be um, considering giving giving us the uh, chance to have responsibility for um, things that could be. So sorry, that's why it confused me because I thought we were, I saw a different slide behind me. So this includes a list, and not an exhaustive list, of what of what we could be asking for a for for the power to do. So. There are things here around that are around the kind of usual territory around LEPs, around transport and economy, but also wider things because the um, devolution bill gives power to take on anything that could be done by the public sector locally. So there are things there that are quite radical and transformative around health and social care, for example. Have any other places got these powers? Well, the best recent example really is um, the work that's been going on in Greater Manchester. So. Um, so Manchester and also towns in Greater Manchester, including Salford, Bolton and Wigan, have a devolution deal and are um, continuing on with that. And that gives an idea about what areas the government are looking to devolve powers to. As part of their, their idea, they've been, they've been granted many of the powers that are outlined above. Um, but in particular, they've, ha they've got the power to keep more of the taxes raised locally, to spend at a regional level, a greater say on education and training locally, um, funding to build housing on existing and the chance to look at health and social care integration. 
Um, what are the things apart from the potential for York to get extra powers um, and funding should we consider as part of this consultation and we're interested in your views on? Um, to get the most, I mean the government's been clear on this, to get the most out of this, um, an elected mayor would be required. We do, we do not get this devolved deal without an elected mayor and the mayor, uh, and that's an issue for consideration. Um, in taking extra, on extra responsibilities, regional bodies um, could be responsible for making future public savings or other difficult decisions in these areas. In London, the Mayor has raised additional funding for important projects in the region, such as transport, uh, funding for the transport network, so, so they've, they've added an additional levy on businesses to fund Crossrail, for example. Uh, the potential for a similar levy could be considered for York, but it's something we'd, we clearly want, to, want the local area's approval of. Um, having a regional body would also mean that we'd, be we'd have the potential to deliver more services jointly either with other councils or across the region and help keep council tax as low as possible. There's no requirement in the combined authorities to do this, but this is a real possibility of how we deal with the current spending pressures. And um, most of the decisions are about transferring, um, and this is a really important issue, most of the decisions are about transferring powers from central government to the local level, but clearly there will be some things that, if we did this, there'll be some decisions that would transfer powers that transfer from a local level to a regional level, but we need to make sure that decisions, and, and it will be the case, that decisions about local council services will be continued to be taken at a York level by York Council. So that's the presentation, which is the overview of the issues. I think, I think we will hand over to you, Chris. Okay. Thank you very much. So, Q&A. Oh. Q&A. <laughs> Who would like to start? If I could. Um, I was quite concerned about the figures you were using to compare the ERDF um, per capita figures for West Yorkshire Combined Authority, uh, West Yorkshire LEP, or the other LEP, and the North Yorkshire LEP. Yeah? Yeah. Because West Yorkshire has much more disadvantaged areas, and we wouldn't be, as a city of York, eligible for many of those ERDF allocations. It may, to me, it sounded like West Yorkshire, Leeds City, however you characterise that other one, would actually, um, they would be eligible for a lot more ERDF per capita, but we in York wouldn't get it. So it basically it puts a bias as if we we're losing out in York on ERDF and we wouldn't get it anyway because of our eligibility status. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, the, what, what, what we're trying to do here is put, put what's, what's out there in the, in the public domain in terms of the facts. Like, I'm just saying these clarifications yeah. because it looks like um, we're not being advantaged going to North Yorkshire in this instance. Um, and I think it needs clarification. We wouldn't be eligible for all those funds per capita in the city of York. Bradford and other places would get them. That's partly true, but there are some funds that we would be eligible There's for. There's some, but I just think it puts a bias in the wrong direction. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Further question? Yes. Can I presume the, the part of the argument for devolution is that it allows decisions over economic factors like transport networks and housing to support that and the skills that businesses need in a, in a region to be all taken in, a, in an integrated way. And I, I'd just be, be interested to hear I mean, from a political side sort of what, what decisions you don't feel you can make at the moment but could make better as part of a, um, uh, a, a, a wider combined authority uh, in that sort of deal. And also a bit more about the, what, given that the, the sort of the, there must then be, be analysis sitting behind some of those decisions of where, do, where, do, where are the skills shortages, where are the travel networks, where are the housing needs, what some of the evidence is behind that as well. Because surely that then helps you make your decision about where York fits in this wider pattern of devolution. Okay, I'll, I'll kick off on that. Thank you very much. Um, it, it, it's a great question. I mean, in terms of devolution and, and what it really means, and it is about taking more powers from central government. So, on the one hand, it's things that we couldn't do if we weren't with other authorities, but equally, we couldn't do them even if we wanted to with other authorities without the government being willing for us to take ownership of those. So that's a huge variety of, of different issues that it might be. And one of the things that we have in York is we possibly don't have the clear geography of some other regions. So Manchester, as people are probably aware, has led the way on devolution. And 
I would say it's clear if you're in Greater Manchester what Greater Manchester means. People know what that area is. In York, we've got one identity, and then you've got the Leeds City region, you've got North Yorkshire, you've got what people are sort of thinking of as a Greater Yorkshire model, and there's significant interaction between all of those different areas. So, for example, people that will be employed in Leeds that live in York, or people that will live outside York and be employed in York. You've got the transport links of the likes of the M62. You've got the fact that we've got the rail links, which are very strong with HS2, are only going to get stronger. So there's this huge array of different variables and different considerations that we have to think about in terms of what powers we want, what powers we think the government will give us. And then, of course, there's the, the big complication of that might be what we want, but unfortunately, it's not for York to write the devolution deal. It's for us to get together with the councils and the sort of things that they may want. So, the, the Greater Manchester deal is the biggest so far. Um, they've got a clear direction and they're taking on ever increasing powers. But what they're looking for is very different to what, for example, Cornwall is looking for. Um, they are united in terms of certain themes, I would say. So transport, for example, is bound to be a key issue. Employment is going to be a key issue. But on homes, for example, certain devolved regions don't really seem to have a great deal of interest in that. And the, the Leeds City Region stroke West Yorkshire Authority is looking at their own particular deal, how that may work, what part York may or may not play in that. And so they've published a set of just under 30 asks, uh, which is now on the website um, of, of the West George Combined Authority. And that is quite an interesting thing for people to look at, because you can go through them one by one. Um, and of those, there's certain things that you would say, well, we couldn't do those as York if we wanted to. We need to work with other partners. Um, there's equally things that would be impractical for us to do as a just one area. Uh, but some of those will be appealing to people, um, and some of them won't. And the first thing about devolution is the government is trying to do it from the point of view of economic growth, and it's to a degree based on big cities in the first instance. Um, but if you look through the different asks, then people will find some of them desirable and some of them undesirable. Um, so it's about who's best to take the decision. Um, sometimes that will be the region. Sometimes people might think it's actually for government. And all these variables come together to hopefully get you know, the, right the right level of devolved decision making for a region. But all the questions in terms of what is that region, what decisions do we want, how should things be done, are the, are the great unknowns, the great variables. Steve. There we are. First time on the book. Uh, um, uh, it is on. It is on. Sorry. <laughs> the obvious one is transport infrastructure. Um, and I don't think that matters too much what the geography is. is you know, um, the more transport infrastructure funding we get devolved to a geographical footprint, um, the better. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, it would include Leeds, it might include North Yorkshire as well. Um, the uh, issue of being able to unpause Transpennine, for example, would become more doable. I wouldn't say it would, you know, it would enable it if that money was devolved to... Uh, um, to Yorkshire, whatever, however you defined it. Um, and that's the obvious one, because it, it's the railway lines that link us all together. Um, um, and I think the second part of your question is interesting, because economists do this, uh, and you end up drawing lines on maps, um, which doesn't suit everybody. So the current um, uh, geography of the West Yorkshire Combined Authority, which includes the five West Yorkshire councils plus ourselves, Selby, Harrogate and Craven is based on economic, economic analysis of what, what the labour market is. Labour markets work sub-regionally um, and at the time of the, um, um, the establishment of city regions under the last government for example and carrying through into the current government a lot of work was done on defining what that is um, and the economists in London and wherever decided that uh, you know, that is pretty much the footprint of the of the labour market and that's what the city region should be based on because it's about economic growth and cities are the drivers of economic growth. That was the kind of the rationale for it. But you know where you've drawn those lines it includes three of the North Yorkshire districts and ourselves 
and there would be people from outside of that line who say, well, I work in Leeds as well, or I want to work in Leeds. Um, so it's a line on a map, you know, done, arrived at through a statistical process, and uh, uh, it won't work for everybody. Um, but that's how, you know, that's how that came about. And I think there is a general point about lines on maps drawn by bureaucrats, that people go across them, because that's not how they live their lives, you know. Um, so, for example, North Yorkshire, um, I tend to be looking our way, but they have you know, important social and economic relationships with Teesside. And similarly, um, the, west of, the west of Yorkshire, uh, Craven, Skipton area, have important relationships with Lancashire. Um, so drawing the line on the map is, you know, it, it is always difficult and, and people will always say, that's not in the right place, so you shouldn't have drawn it in the first place. But that is how, that is how the, uh, those lines came about. They're looking at labour markets, skill shortages, where the supply and demand issues are. Um, doesn't always work socially, doesn't always work politically, which I think is why you know, there's quite a big debate going on at the moment about, about that. Quick point of clarification for what's done. Probably career limiting for slightly, but I think what Steve felt when you were talking about the LEP geography was decided at the Leeds City region area. There are a couple of confused faces in the. Sorry, um, mentioned the point about LEPs, which you know, which Phil did uh, <coughs> bring up in the presentation. We are in two LEPs, which is quite unusual. Um, we're in the West Yorkshire one and. We're in the North Yorkshire one, um, and that's because of this issue of difficulty drawing a line on a map. We have relations with North Yorkshire as well as we do with West. The point about LEPs is they are, um, legally, they're unincorporated bodies. Uh, and uh, although they're very important to current, the current government in terms of how, um, as they were to the last one, how um, we drive economic growth at, at a regional and sub-regional level, um, they are basically associated with the emerging combined authority um, structure because um, the combined authority, when it comes into place, will actually hold the money uh, and will be the accountable body for the LEP. Um, and that's certainly the case in the North East where I've been working, you know, that um, they don't have the geography problems and uh, challenges that we do in, in Yorkshire. So the, the government sees a very close working relationship between the combined authorities and the LEPs, although they have slightly different functions. Um, so there would have to be, um, the, the, the line I was talking about was the line uh, that describes the West Yorkshire LEP, which is the labour market around Leeds, but it includes us, but the line that describes the uh, North Yorkshire LEP also includes us. Mm. Well, I was really only going to, I was going to make the point that's just been made, the fact that we are in two LEPs actually just shows the, the quandary we are in in deciding where <coughs> where the lines will be drawn for devolu devolution I, I think uh, that is that that does show that difficulty and I, I also wanted to make the point that in the rush for devolution and getting powers down to us we need to make sure that we don't lose any of the powers that we've now got um, so in transport, we still want to be able to decide our own bus services, for example, and where they go. So we, we do need to be careful that we, we not only gain more powers, but, but don't lose the powers we've got up to the region. So I think that people, certainly in York, would feel that was um, a detrimental step. Um, so the West Yorkshire Combined Authority, it doesn't include Harrogate or Selby, does it? So you've, got two, you've got two things. You've got the West Yorkshire Combined Authority, which is the five West Yorkshire authorities, and to a degree York, depending on how you view the contiguous boundaries. And then you've got the Leeds City Region, which is those five West Yorkshire authorities, plus York, plus the three North Yorkshire districts, Harrogate, Craven, and Selby. So the West Yorkshire Combined Authority does not have Selby or Harrogate in. There's a gap. Correct. Okay, so we're in Ireland. Yeah. We are. Yeah. 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 Chris? Yep. Um, yep. I am, I'm Chris Bailey, I'm Chair of the Cultural Partnership, which is called York at Large. Um, and uh, part of, of my responsibility, or where we have oversight, is so creative industries. And you'll be aware that's in the draft economic new draft strategy, um, and rightly so, as a major growth area. 
that's one of the areas where York is definitely the capital for North Yorkshire and the East Riding to some extent as well. So finding ways of preserving those links is going to be very important. To that extent, being part of the North Yorkshire LEP has actually been quite important. Um, and losing the capacity to work with the North Yorkshire LEP, I think, would be, would be a problem. Um, in, in other respects, you can see the advantage of being part of um, West Yorkshire as it goes forward. But I would like to hear some more about the process of getting to the final proposals. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to know, for instance, if you take an area of concern. I think culture's on that list, culture yeah. and heritage. Um, just to take that, there has been, unlike Greater Manchester, unlike the North East, where there's been conversations going on for over a decade yeah. about collaborating in culture and heritage, there is no such conversation mm. um, that goes across to West Yorkshire. Um, if anything, there's less now than there was five or six years ago. Um, if there is to be again, that, that kind of thing needs to happen very quickly, strategies need to be compared, uh, principles need to be hammered out. It's not impossible. Uh, but there's some big things on the horizon. Mm. Leeds bid to be City of Culture in 2023, mm. for instance, our own status as UNESCO City of Media Arts. Um, so there's a question about the process through yeah. to the final proposal. Then, can I just ask, I think that the powers might be granted initially, but they can be added to subsequently. Yeah. Um, so thinking about the process as um, life goes on, after the granting of those initial powers, I think it would be very interesting from a strategic perspective. Okay, yeah, but the easy uh, question to answer was your last one, which is yes, you're right. Um, um, Manchester are now on phase two, or possibly, arguably, phase three of their devolution deal. Um, uh, the focus in Manchester now is around health spending, uh, whereas initially it was around economic development oh. issues. The second question is more difficult. The government line on this is they're basically assuming uh, that city regions will have a mayor. That's not the case in uh, every part of the country. So the Cornwall deal, for example, is not regarded as a city region, uh, so they're not having a mayor. So it depends where you are, but I think they would regard um, Leeds definitely as a city region. Manchester are going to have a mayor. The North East are now, I think, pretty much saying they're going to have a mayor, even though the city region in the North East includes England's most rural county, the one that I used to manage. Um, you can get the entire North East inside Northumberland twice over. So the city region, the definition is slightly different up there, I think. Um, but uh, the, basically, so there's an assumption that you have a mayor if it's a city region. The, the re government requirement is that there is an agreed geography, <coughs> excuse me, um, and that is agreed by the constituent councils um, and that they produ you produce a series of uh, proposition, a set of prop propositions that would be, be taken forward as part of the spending review. And there's a published uh, requirement for submissions by early September, although I think that's not an absolute uh, deadline in some cases. Um, the, um, the difficulty, is, has already been mentioned, in Yorkshire, however you define it, is getting that agreed geography. Um, uh, the reason is that all the councils within the area have to agree to it and whatever kind of geographical footprint you you look at and I've kind of discovered this in the last two or three weeks there's at least one, one council that doesn't like it so at the moment we don't have an agreed geography and that's well known and it's published in all the newspapers yeah. so the um, political leaders of whatever the footprint is have to come together and agree one Otherwise, I think there's, there's probably no oh. deal. Or, just, more than one, or more than one even. So can I just ask further to that then? So can, can I assume that the cabinet members in each of the councils create a kind of forum for themselves to talk about, say, health, or transport, or housing? Yeah, so I mean, really it's been, it's been so fast moving, the whole agenda. And in terms of the, the process, as Steve said, the government wants sort of things on the table for early September. The previous deadline was having things for the budget. And so Phil's read out the particular wording um, for what the Chancellor said. And, and you know, I was, I was very surprised at how 
fixated a lot of people were on rushing to have a deal done for the budgets, the Chancellor could announce something in particular, which was never realistic. So obviously where the Chancellor has spoken about West Yorkshire and partners, well, what does partners mean? Does it mean sort of broadening out to a city region, a greater Yorkshire, the whole of Yorkshire, whatever it may mean? It was just sort of getting that, that flag there. Um, so there's obviously been lots of meetings held. Those really have been between sort of leaders of councils and leaders of districts rather than any sort of detail on the, um, you know, the, the, the health members, for example, meeting with their counterparts or anything like that. To get the asks formulated, whichever model it may be, then there's obviously conversations had at council level between members and officers about the sort of things that they would like. So, so in, in um, for example, this area, health is probably one of the most difficult ones because all different CCGs and everything like that. In Manchester, then they're, they're jumping on it and they're really going for it. But here it's the sort of thing that is possibly less likely um, to happen. But you get the appetites amongst different councils for the sort of powers they may like. Um, what I would say is it really is, it, it ultimately comes down to economic growth that is being looked for. So when you talk about culture, there's never a time when somebody will say, well, okay, we've got this on economic growth, but then we need to see what is going to happen on culture. It's how far the culture will help economic growth, which it does in the sort of things you flagged up, like the media arts and everything like that. But it's very much the economic growth focus. Um, so that's, yeah, the comprehensive spending review is the, is the next key date, everything like that. Um, as Steve said, I think you're going to see powers potentially added to, um, and it's almost better for a deal not to be done. Well, I think it is better for a deal not to be done than the wrong deal be done. You don't want to rush into something because the gov one of the key things I think we would sort of wait and see a few weeks ago was how much the government wants a few areas to have a devolution deal and how much it wants to almost carve up the country. And I think it's possibly more the latter. They would like to see it carved up. So it wouldn't just be purely big cities and then everyone else forgotten about. And all the more you look at that is all the more you say, well, how different areas will tag on, whereas it's very difficult to jump out of a region once you're in there. Mm -hmm. If you're not in there at the start, mm -hmm. you won't get the say about the powers and the asks and everything like that. But it's better that probably than, than have the wrong thing. Thank you. Sorry, just on that. Sorry. Yeah. Just, uh, just on that question about asks, where do you kind of see the split being in terms of York as part of the Leeds City Region and York as part of North Yorkshire? How is it weighted? You know, does it have a bigger voice in the North Yorkshire? Does it have? How are how are the how is the voice going to be heard? I suppose in different areas. And do you know? So you know, do you get to ask for whatever it is in the Leeds City Region? Does Bath? Does um, Bradford get to ask? Or, How's that going to work? And, and so are you a big fish in a sort of rural pond mm. or are you a small fish in a kind of very urban focused and how's that going to work? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think certain areas will know their geography and they know where they stand. So, for example, on Bradford, they are obviously going to do something with the West Yorkshire councils and then it's how far out they go. Now, that's probably not going to be going west because obviously you've got Manchester and you've got Lancashire and all those, although there's interrelation, they, they'll do their own deals and that sort of thing, but it's how far out they go. So the asks are very much about what's going to the government. So you'll have a model of, for example, North Yorkshire, East Yorkshire, led, and how that might work, and asks that they think, so that what they would like to get from the government and what they can offer in return, and then you have a West Yorkshire-led model of asks. And throughout the country, there'll be certain areas where one thing will appeal to them that won't appeal to somebody else. But how anything is going to work going forward, you have to have the, the, the trust and you have to have the ability to work together with the different organisations. So at the moment, we are in the West Yorkshire combined authority, sort of. Um, and there's a big thing, where we, while we don't have the contiguous boundaries, how much do we get a bit left behind versus how much do we get benefits for all, all the sort of strength of those economies? So these are the things we're trading off. And ultimately, as we formulate the sorts of things at officer level that we think matter for York, so you know that will be things like rail, and, and, and Steve says transport is the big thing. That will be things like rail. It will be things like the York Central site and how much that can be. be things like the Northern Ring Road. So all of these sorts of things, then it's who can offer those and who can and further them. Um, so the, we're never going to get our ideal 
set of asks, but it's all the various trade-offs and what we'd like. And when it is so fast moving, um, that it just becomes all the all the more difficult, really. Um, but yeah, the whole fish pond analogy is definitely a good one. Um, one of the things we're thinking about. So, but just. Mm. Uh, and this comes out of looking at the Cornwall, the case for Cornwall document. Uh, Cornwall, like ourselves, is very much an area of tourism. And I think I've been doing some work on cultural tourism across West Yorkshire, and there's no question that York is a leader in this area for this region that we're going into. Um, and I think it, it's worth pushing for some way of solving it, something which could become a problem for York in the future. And that is... An inc uh, a division between what people see as for tourists and what for residents in York. It sometimes blows up into a row over, say, museum charging. Mm. That's only the latest instance yeah. of something which can happen in cities that mm. have a lot of tourism. Mm. An opportunity to solve it, spotted by Cornwall, was retaining um, VAT receipts um, and then routing that into services for residents. I thought that was quite a, a clever move, although technically perhaps quite difficult. Um, but thinking about ways in which York's preeminence in tourism can play into the economic mix for us, I think would be very useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just a general point about Cornwall, it's a kind of hybrid solution because Cornwall's unique. You know, um, I've said earlier, you know, the, the agenda is largely around cities, which it is true. Um, and the point about Cornwall is it's 100, 150, 170 miles away from the nearest core city, and there's no other part of England that has that issue. So they've come to separate arrangements arrange about Cornwall. I'm not sure, and I'm looking at Phil here, I'm not sure the, the VAT ask has been agreed, um, but Phil can come in in a minute. But I agree with you about, you know, it, 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 you, um, if you don't ask, uh, and I think, you know, you can see the logic of that ask in, in relation to, to Cornwall. Um, but I think the other p point is the one that uh, Chris made earlier is whatever you do with this, you need to see tourism as an economic activity as well. And the problems with places like, places like York, and we're not unique in this, is um, how you balance the needs of residents against the, the spending power of visitors. Um, and it's that, that's the issue that sometimes comes into conflict, and the charges issue is one that you've identified. Car parking's another. Uh, oh, sorry, I shouldn't mention car parking, but, you know, so how we accommodate all the people who want to come and visit York, as well as um, making life bearable for the people who live here, uh, that's a problem of, um, not just of York, but of a number of old cities uh, around England and around the world. But I, I think that, um, that you kind of have to reserve, reverse the question, you know, almost, what would York be like if we didn't have that visitor economy? And I think the answer is we'd really struggle. On the VAT point, I don't think it has been given. And you know, the nature of VAT is the final consumption tax, so it's only paid at the point of final consumption. So it'll be quite. There's, you know, the, the, the Treasury people looking at tax. So I used to be one kind of would look at kind of when whether it's possible to do kind of from an administrative basis. And I would my view is that 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 devolution ask is very complicated to do from an administrative basis, even before you look at all the different issues around it, so I, I suspect that they won't be granted that, but who knows. I hope you can hear me. I think um, my strategic starting point would be that the northern powerhouse depends on the growth of the economy. It is all about that. And Manchester have got a head start in getting themselves together. And a lot of business people in Yorkshire, and I speak to a lot of business people, would prefer to have the Yorkshire brand and to go for Yorkshire because we would see ourselves then with actually a larger economy than Manchester and then when we combine the two, we would be in a really good position. Now, it's not politically possible, and I think we know that. One of, uh, one of the benefits of having a larger entity is that every sub-region would have to have its particular strategy I mean, for instance, for York, tourism, the arts, and that are so important. But here, what I'm concerned about is, as someone with a business in York and who lives in a postcode that is York, this city should be leading something, not following. 
It's got, outside the Yorkshire brand, York has got the best international brand in Yorkshire by miles. And it doesn't really use it. York could be the Cambridge of the North without any doubt whatsoever. And I think my concern is not about the Leeds City Region economy, which is too small to compete in global terms. However, it is very big in comparison to York and North Yorkshire. And I think whatever we do in terms of devolution, we will benefit from the Leeds economy because it's there. So it doesn't matter whether you go in the combined authority or not, it will be there. And as businesses, and I speak for businesses, we will actually gain from it being there. My concern would be if York and North York should go in different directions, it will be very difficult in the future to, uh, to hit the housing numbers that York needs. Because if you think where people commute from, it's not, you know, you have to work with your partners to do that. And I know you're looking quizzically, Steve. But the numbers suggest that East Riding and North Yorkshire commuters outnumber West Yorkshire. And I know there is a misconception, but those are the right numbers. So it's really important to work with our neighbours together. And I personally don't want to see York going in a different direction to North Yorkshire. However, what I would say is if we go for devolution in the different way with York, North Yorkshire, East Riding and possibly Hull, because the economies then have to come together, we are in a different negotiating position with West Yorkshire. And for instance, the really bad deal that's being done, which is five million pounds a year going out of the city into the West Yorkshire Transport Fund, and which will not actually dual the ring road, we could be in a better negotiating power to bring the pot together. And that's clearly good for this city. Thank you. I think I'll just, I'll sort of, Answer those those points if I can just do with a yes. bit of a um, clarification for maybe some of the people watching on the webcast and that sort of thing, which is just to say when we're talking about the, the Yorkshire model and how that may buy in. And I, I hope you know it's same for you, Barry. We're talking sometimes about what we all know as all of Yorkshire, but equally sometimes we're talking about a cross around as you go west Yorkshire, north Yorkshire, east Yorkshire. Greater so, Yorkshire. A, a, yeah, the greater Yorkshire, where a lot of these areas do not include south Yorkshire. Um, on the, the point about the transport funding, then obviously we've looked um, at an officer level in terms of how much the, the deals on the table from the, the west Yorkshire transport region are um, intrinsic to what may happen with devolution and how much they're not and then also how much those deals that we've actually got are great deals and are the sort of deals we'd want to do. Um, the figures, the, the 5 million, it doesn't quite get to 5 million, it is less than, than 5 million. My understanding peaks out at just under 4 million per annum that it would cost us um, and it is a, a good way of borrowing for those. However, um, there are other options and, and so yes we shouldn't be rushing to tie ourselves in and we as an administration are determined not to be tying, rushing to tie ourselves in and also those deals are, are not potentially as great as may have been led to believe. Um, for example we have potentially more park and rides Well, we're not going from zero to two we're going from and I should have checked this because I quote this stat loads, it's something like six to eight or something like that. So it's not earth shattering in the difference it makes. Also, we're looking at... Sorry? Five. Five, five to seven, thank you, Anne. Um, also, we're looking at funding for the, the station, but that is potentially a, a quite small amount compared to the bigger ask about what it will mean for York Central. And then on the Northern Ring Road, which is undoubtedly a really big ask, if we're to get that fully jeweled and grade separated, that's estimated to cost about 300 billion, uh, 300 million, sorry. Uh, well, these estimates go up, 300 million. And the um, figure for roundabout improvement is less than 30 million, which of course would be money down the drain if we then further down the line grade separated it. So. Really from the point of view of the conversation we're having, and yeah, I think you're absolutely right that York has a, a, a key role in, in leading in this region. We're a massive driver for so many parts of the economy, um, whether it be sort of neighbouring towns like Selby or Moulton or something like that, or even where with HS2, how we suddenly become far more important to Leeds and how they you know, really need us. Then we're very aware of that, and it's just really opening the conversation and 
hopefully people won't confuse our lack of wanting to say things very publicly um, and wanting to sort of say this is what's absolutely right with a, a lack of willingness to lead on it. And, you know, I personally think that some of the, the things that politicians have said um, haven't been overly helpful. I think, you know, it's important we all meet, we all discuss things, um, rather than somebody coming out and saying, I think this. If, if there are certain areas where they do have a very distinct area, and so, they, you know, they, if you're in West Yorkshire, you'll always be in West Yorkshire, so it's not going to vary much. But there are some areas who've come out and, and jumped on too many things. And when I've had certain meetings with political colleagues across the region, you know, it has been the classic darkened room and what deadline we're rushing to and I've very much been of the opinion that you have to open up that room because I would hate to explain to a businessman further down the line well what happened Mr Businessman was a few of us got together in a room and we all thought this was the right deal because we don't run businesses and we don't look after customers but we decided this was our economic area and we decided this was the right deal so it's about kicking it off and saying to, to people residents and businesses alike where do you see the future? And that's really just starting the conversation and starting the ability to engage with people. So. I just, yeah, Barry, I agree with your point about branding. So again, please. I agree with your point about branding, about there having a recognisable brand that kind of sits alongside Manchester but doesn't necessarily compete with it. With it. And I think you get a, a, a lot of sympathy for what you said in relation to seeing Yorkshire as a bigger place, not just from the point of view of that... Uh, in an investment marketing um, perspective, but also from a, a kind of social and, uh, and cultural perspective, as has been mentioned. Uh, and I think, you know, one of the, uh, you know, um, roles of business people who are engaged in this process is if that's what you genuinely believe, um, it would be really helpful if business people could say that to, um, you know, some of Chris's colleagues in West Yorkshire, for example. Um, that would be really, really helpful. Um, because there is, a, you know, uh, at the moment, one of the options that is not politically acceptable is the one that you just outlined. Um, if that's something that business feels really strongly about, then I think you know, business people are in a position to, to do that. And actually, just the other point I'd make as well, which is, again, partly to the room, partly to the people on the webcast, is that... Um, it's not necessarily, or it shouldn't be, all about this is the area, this is the combined authority, these are the powers. It's all about how people relate to each other, um, different organisations. So there is the significant overlap. So you have different areas where, look, the big thing is just transport. And certainly uh, I've had conversations with people where they've said, well, we really must go in Region X because it's the be-all and end-all for. They list the reasons and it, it's all transport, mm. every single part of its transport and so you think well do you actually therefore want to devolve powers over fostering of children um, over spatial planning with that area and it's like no no we just want this particular road or rail link and you think well is there not a better way of potentially addressing that but the how we all relate to, to each other is, is very key so then you are potentially looking at the ability to have the different models of almost LEP style under an overarching mayor um, I say potentially because it's obviously not me that makes the decision and, and this is the, the complication that the government's not clear on what there is there but it, it's, it's for everyone to ask for what they want. If I could make the point Chris that um, you, are, you have said and, and Steve has said that it would be helpful if business people spoke about what was happening in Yorkshire and, and you, of course you're absolutely right and a lot of people are. Unfortunately business people aren't at the table when the negotiations are being made and perhaps that could be uh, modified somewhat uh, to the betterment of York but all that you're saying is, is, very, is very sound it's simply that from where we sit as business people we understand that the way you link economies is by transport frankly, that's the success of London and of course there is something called transport for the north and therefore transport will and must be linked whatever combination of authorities there are that is what's going to happen because that's the only way the northern powerhouse will function. So I wouldn't yeah. worry too much about the cross Pennine links and so on. As a, as a northern community, we will sort those out. I don't think it has great relevance to which combined authority we're going to Yeah, but I'd completely disagree with that, Barry. Uh, we need, uh, not which combined authority, but we have something in Yorkshire. 
uh, whether it's in West Yorkshire or North Yorkshire or the bigger footprint. And the reason is that uh, uh, Rail North, Transport for the North, is all about the Trans Pennine Corridor and the East Coast Main Line up to Newcastle. Plus. Uh, yes, plus, plus various other bits, yes. Um, what we will have now, if we can't, if, you know, if people can't reach any kind of agreed geography for uh, Yorkshire, however defined, whether it's one or two, um, we will completely get left behind by Manchester, Merseyside and the North East, who are all now in a position to put in firm bids by the 4th of September. Um, now, the position with us is, if we don't do that, we won't, um, um, we won't be out of it forever, but we'll just be at the back of the queue. Um, and, you know, you talked about York and Yorkshire being able to give a lead here. We won't be in that position to do that if we don't have at least one combined authority representing the area. So it's not a question of which, it's just having one at all. Well, you know, if we don't have one, we'll, that'll be a real setback. But if I could answer that, I think mm. Transport for the North will do the linking of the economies. Mm. The local transport um, bodies that you are talking about will exist. For instance, I know that the York and North Yorkshire Lab hasn't got its transport funding yet, it's, mm. and therefore it's not included in the numbers that you see, mm. and that it's not allocated yet, mm. though the government have told us you know, what we can have. Mm. But I think the important point about that is that therefore there is flexibility for York, whereas the West Yorkshire Fund is prescribed. Mm. You know exactly what you're getting. Well, in a combined authority with a mayor, the transport function and the transport responsibilities would be with the mayor. And all that money would, it mm. would rest with the mayor. So we don't necessarily have the flexibility that you suggested there. And, you know, and I still maintain the point that if we don't have the governance and financial infrastructure that other similar places do, we'll be at a big disadvantage. I'm just a little bit confused about the, the time, imper thank you. time imperative on this, because I, I kind of got a sense from you that it was, if we didn't come up with a solution immediately, it was still okay, and the Chief Executive, I get a different impression, that if we don't have it by the 4th of September, we're toast. Um, could, no, I'm just, I, I may, I maybe I misunderstood no, what no, people no, were they, saying, they, but could you explain? And yeah, also, absolutely. Yeah. And also, the process within the Council about, are we going to be, will you be presenting options? Or will it be, okay, you'll do the work in-house and recommend one solution? Or, I have no idea, I'd love to know. Yeah, okay. So on the first point, I mean, what, what Steve and I are saying is consistent in terms of the government is giving councils this opportunity to devolve powers to them. Whatever powers they want, if they agree, so I say some things will appeal to others and not to the rest. Um, they were initially fixated on the budget, and they've got some deals emerging from that. The next deadline is early September, to go in with the comprehensive spending review. And essentially, there will be a queue at government of all these various deals. So if we have the deal that we want to be part of, and we're at the front of the queue, it means that you know we're going to have, as it were, more of a chance. We're going to be more of the government's focus. If we are further down the queue, then, or if we're not in the queue, because we've not got anything from that point, then that's exactly where we will be. I don't think, it's not, for example, like the government is saying, what we're doing is we're giving you £20 million grants and we've got 10 to get through, so once they're gone, they're gone. For me, it is an agenda of the government that they want to devolve powers and so they will keep doing that. So if we had our what we want six months down the line, a year down the line, I don't see why the government wouldn't want the door to be open to us, but it would be after everybody else has cracked on with that. So I think that's where it comes back to the point about it would be better not to do a deal than to do the wrong deal. But equally, if you can be in that queue, if you know what you want, then that's great. The complexity really is the fact that we do not have this absolutely clear geography. So that's the first point. Um, on the, the second point, then, when we joined, as it were, the... West Yorkshire Combined Authority, or I say sort of, because it lacked teachers back. We voted on that at council, didn't we? I think we did. So we voted, so we and we'd have to vote on this sort of thing again at full council. Um, and I don't think the process formally, legally, would have to be um, a great deal more than that in terms of if we had a particular authority area that we were going to join, 
you know, a vote of the council would be. In. There'd be all sorts of other things in terms of what government would do, the conversations that would be had there. But I don't think it would take more than that. Um, so that's why it makes the consultation that we are embarking upon all the more unusual and all the more difficult. Um, and it's worth saying that, well, some, most, I don't know, authorities are not doing any form of consultation. Um, you know, maybe a letter to the local paper inviting feedback or, or something like that. Um, in West Yorkshire, for example, they, they, they face a big issue that three of the five authorities have voted in the last three years, I think it's three years, on whether they should have elected mayors, and the vote has been no, they shouldn't. So they will have to have an elected mayor to get powers. So never mind consulting or not consulting, they're going to have to go back on something they've clearly consulted on and have been told no to. Um, now, they could take a view that, well, if they were to put the powers argument differently, now they could get that through. Um, so this is where it comes back to, you know, we are getting out what's going on, that we don't know the definitives of that, but it's for people to feed in all of the various thoughts. Um, and the more information we can get out on how might things might pan out, then the better. Yeah, I think that the, the real deadline, if you like, is the ability of the government to announce some of these deals in the spending review. And so the September thing has been, work, has been pulled forward from that. When do, when do the civil servants need certain amounts of information to allow the chance of their announced deals in the spending review. And Chris is right, it wouldn't be that the door was closed, it would just be we further back in the queue. Um, and, um, you know, that presents risks as well, as I said in answer to an earlier question. And yes, the, uh, uh, every local authority would have to make a formal decision to join whatever combined authority it was. Uh, and I think, you know, that um, we're doing this. You can consult forever on something like this and never get a clear view back from the public. So, you know, we'll get mixed views, we know that, and that's why you need politicians to make these decisions. Absolutely. Well, I think the first thing is, is the consultation is, is possibly more an engagement. So it's basically saying to people, this is going on we are facing a decision about our future devolution-wise. Because business-wise, um, if I speak to business people a week ago or a few months ago, then one of the common things they'll tell me is either, well, all the jobs are in West Yorkshire, or don't go and just throw us into West Yorkshire. You know, those sort of two absolutes mm. almost. Yeah. Um, whereas in reality, there's a vast amount more to it. By saying this is going on and promoting it in the best way we can, then it just means that more and more people will actually take a look at you know, some of the literature, have a look at some of the, the news coverage of it, and think, well, what, what does this mean? What is this all about? Um, so I think the big thing that will probably resonate with the public um, will be the Westminster model's not working. Uh, we want more decisions taken locally. Wait a minute, this is going to be a whole new layer of politicians, and then we don't want mayors and we don't want a mayor if they're not from York and all that sort of thing. So I think that will be the sort of standard resident uh, feedback. Businesses, it will be very much more, I think, about where they will see their areas of, of, of operation, the geography. So, and that, that may or may not be why we should have a combined authority with that area. You know, this isn't about a choice between whether we build a brick wall on the A64 near Tadcaster or one near Moulton. It's not about who we're choosing to work with or not work with. Um, it's almost getting it up a level in terms of some of the considered opinions um, to give people the chance to feed in things uh, for what, what they think will work, how they see York. But equally, um, it would be politically crazy of us not to open it up to people, not to give people a chance to have their say, because it is a really big thing, it's a really big opportunity, um, and so I think that's why we want to. So in terms of what we want to learn and what we want to get out of it, well, we could easily have half a dozen questions um, and, and get the answers and, and almost know what the answer would be in advance. So do you want an, a, an extra layer of politicians where we get a resounding no? And it, it wouldn't really be that. Do you want an elected mayor? We'd get probably a relatively strong no. Is there a willingness to have an elected mayor to get further powers? We'd probably be getting a bit of a yes. And do you think decisions should be taken at the regional level rather than at Westminster? We'd get a resounding yes. 
So, you know, if we were doing a formal consultation, there'd be all sorts of ways that we could cook it, not that we ever would or anything like that, but, but I think it's just getting the information. So, you know, one of the things I've said to the sort of communications officers is, look, have we got um, the email address set up? And we have, so, for, you know, so devolution at york.gov.uk, which whenever I'm talking to somebody now, I can say, email in your opinions, tell us what you think. And then when we face a decision, be it a few weeks down the line or a few months down the line, I don't know if there's going to be a by-election in drink houses in Woodthorpe, but um, um, we, we'll have that information, have it there. Um, you know, just by engaging people more. So. Um, I, I think that's exactly right. The, the idea of getting as much feedback as possible on how people feel on those questions. One of the issues is that it's not just how you ask the question is that there's so little flesh on the bones for each of the potential areas. Um, and I just wondered how, how you would feel about this. It's almost as though we're thinking of York as being inevitably the supplicant in this. Um, and uh, I, a, this is to do with a kind of tone. Um, and I think, in a way, given the discussion we've been having, you can see ways in which York should be leading the debate for the region that has the devolved powers. Um, and uh, so if we were to take tourism, for instance, where we're undoubtedly preeminent, then is there a role for us in putting the flesh on the bones by convening discussions, obviously very quickly, so that people do have something around the region with which to disagree or, or to, to agree. I can think of a couple of other areas. Heritage and all the science that goes with it is another. And it's possible that media plays a, and creative industries plays a big role as well for us. I mean, I think there is a difference between people like yourselves who are already engaged, deeply engaged in these processes and what we might call the general public. So there are, there are challenges for us uh, to do that. You know, it's easy for you to engage with this, you know a lot about it, but most people, um, I wouldn't say they don't care, but uh, it's, it's not the top of their list of things to come to a public meeting about. So, I mean, if we had time, we would we would uh, do smarter forms of engagement and actually try and get out there more to, to people. But as Chris said, it's very difficult to frame questions without having a conversation around it and having a lot of detail. Um, so there are different ways you'd engage with different groups of stakeholders. Uh, and I agree with you, if we had time, we'd probably do more of that, but we don't. Um, so this is, you know, was cast as a series of conversations with people of York, and it is inevitably going to attract people like yourselves who already know quite a bit about it. Um, I think at the end of the day, that's why it is a decision that has to be made by politicians and not in some kind of referendum, where people have the wrong frame of reference, you know, and, or have no frame of reference on which to be able to make a sensible decision. So we're doing the best we can, given the, ta given the time we've got, Chris. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, th I think probably sort of one of the aims of this consultation is not necessarily to reach out to the people that are most engaged because we know they're going to feed out feed in their views and we obviously we talk to those people um, it is really to reach to 200,000 people in York and I think that we've got a real duty to explain to those people what's going on um, and equally the whole thing about how much the city might lead well we're formulating the sort of things that we we really think um, are important to York so our, our devolution asks and that's something officers are working on um, in terms of how much we lead or how much we follow, dare I say it, um, that in essence is almost w which region we see ourselves sitting within. So if you look, for example, at <coughs> hypothetical scenarios, you could have a Greater Yorkshire, which would be everything except South Yorkshire. You could have a West Yorkshire coming round a bit the east, so tagging on places like York, or you could have some sort of North Yorkshire, East Yorkshire, um, York type of deal. So those are the potential hypothetical deals. If it was the latter, then we are going to be setting more of the tone, you would think, than if it was a sort of West Yorkshire-based deal. And so that's one of the trade-offs. Um, but I think, you know, I've got my views on where the future lies. Um, our coalition partners will have their views, but they're not absolute. And I think where we've um, hopefully succeeded quite well is that we, ha we have broadened it out so people are saying, I think this and I think that, rather, and no one's really coming to us and saying, ah, oh, well, it's inevitable you're going to do X or inevitably you're going to do Y, which shows that we are hopefully making that what will be a good evidence-based decision. And I think the, you know, the, the, the fact is that 
we are already in a leadership role uh, and an influencing role because everybody wants York. You know, and for the reasons that you said and the reasons everybody else said, um, York is the only standalone unitary authority in this region. Um, all the others have got formal legal relationships with each other. Um, so we are in actually quite a fortunate position. It doesn't necessarily make the decision any easier because there will be these choices. Um, but actually, I think what we're saying to, uh, to people is that um, you know, this, is, this, is, this is our um, proposition to you. If you want us to be in with you, this is what we'd like to get out of it. And we'll be saying the same thing you know, if there is still this dichotomy between West and North, North Yorkshire. You know, and some people haven't given up on that. Um, this is what this is what we'll need, and uh, and the uh, they're, they're not, the uh, requirements are not that different whether we're talking to North Allet or Leeds. Um, my question is, could you um, explain? I can understand why North Yorkshire would want us, but can you explain why West Yorkshire wants us? They want our GVA, uh, they want our universities, they want our connectivity, uh, they want our quality of life. So, just quickly, I mean, thanks very much, everyone, for coming. Um, anything for anyone else in the panel to add, first of all, or just... Okay, so I'll wrap it up here. Um, as I say, we really are just starting this listing exercise. Um, it's about getting the options out uh, insofar as we know them. And indeed, one of the things we had on a press release was we talked about the options and then changed the word options to potential scenarios, <laughs> reflecting the fact that we just don't know how this will unfold. Um, Important people do feed in whatever they think. Uh, you can write to us West offices or say email devolution at york.gov.uk. But equally, ourselves, as, uh, as myself, the leader of the Conservative group, and as deputy leader of the Liberal Democrats, you know, please, people do get in touch with us, say what you think, um, because we do want this to be as involved as possible in what's a rapidly changing world. So thanks again for attending. <laughs>